This nondescript office park in nondescript Warrenville is home to one of Chicago's most audacious tech startups. In a laboratory here, the 45 employees of Coscata, mostly microbiologists and chemical engineers, are perfecting a process to make ethanol from just about anything, from garbage to sugarcane to sewage, and to make it for less than half the cost of gasoline. Right now, uh, for most of the feedstocks that we envision, we're talking about operating costs. Uh, for a gallon of ethanol to be in the range of a dollar or less to produce a gallon of gasoline would be somewhere in the uh, $2 to $2.50 range. Bill Rowe is the former chief operating officer at Naperville chemical giant Nalco. He was lured out of retirement by Coscada's board in October 2007 and charged with taking its ethanol production from the test lab to the fuel pump. Rowe has what every entrepreneur dreams of, $80 million in funding, a giant corporate backer, and a breakthrough technology. This technology doesn't start with a microchip, but with a microscopic bug that scientists found at the bottom of an Oklahoma swamp. Coscada's ethanol making starts by applying intense heat to anything containing carbon. It could be plastic bottles, wood chips, old tires, or corn stalks. The heat turns the carbon into gas. The microbes from Oklahoma inhale that gas. What they exhale is fuel-grade ethanol. The process is far more efficient than gas refining or corn ethanol production. It's also more eco-friendly than corn-based ethanol. It reduces greenhouse gases by as much as 96% compared to gasoline, while corn-based production reduces them by only 30%. And because it can make ethanol out of just about anything, Coscada can make it anywhere, not just in the Corn Belt. Now Rowe and his team at Coscata must prove they can replicate the process on a grand scale. They're building a plant near Pittsburgh where they expect to produce 40,000 gallons of ethanol next year. By early 2011, they hope to be producing 100 million gallons a year. But a plant that size would cost $400 million. Rowe knows that's a lot of capital and that three years is a long time given all the players chasing renewable fuels. He's got a plan to get Coscata ethanol in production even faster and cheaper by licensing the technology to refiners and others who could produce the ethanol themselves. We have to have a licensing model. We have to get this technology in the hands of a variety of other players so that uh, we can have a what we think is a disproportionate share of the mandate for ethanol that uh, is now in place. With politicians, regulators, and consumers pushing for more sustainable fuels, the market for ethanol is expected to explode in the next 15 years. By the year 2022, production is projected to hit 36 billion gallons a year in the U.S., up from 6.5 billion last year. The market could be worth as much as $200 billion. Coscata's chances of grabbing a big share of that market are good enough to impress some big players in biofuels, including Silicon Valley billionaire Vinod Kozla, the world's leading ethanol investor. And earlier this year, Coscata made a splash when it secured an undisclosed investment from General Motors. The auto giant hopes that cheap ethanol could help it sell fuel-efficient cars to compete with Japanese-made hybrids. Our own GM scientists have thoroughly studied Coscata's process, and they're highly encouraged by what they've learned. Coscata is far from the only startup chasing biofuels. Investors like Kozla are bankrolling hundreds of enterprises. But so far, nobody else has proven they can produce ethanol from such a diverse mix of feedstocks, let alone at such a low cost. I think there's going to be a number of plays that make it to market successfully here. We just happen to have, we believe, uh, the opportunity to get there relatively quickly with a platform that can be duplicated. If he's right, America's gas stations may never be the same.